Hello there and welcome. My name is Cheryl Forrest, Chief Strategy Officer here at Pure Romance, and welcome to the next topic in our series on maximizing profitability with Pure Romance. Today, we're going to talk about how do you cut expenses to protect your profits. And I know from working with a number of top consultants out there, this is an incredibly, incredibly important topic in the series because it's one area that many consultants get it wrong. And if you do, you will find that that profit will go away incredibly quickly. Now to start us off, I have to give a, a special thank you to the following um, individuals that are on President's Club and Board of Directors and Senior Board of Directors. Uh, who actually took some time and weighed in and provided a number of their tips and suggestions on how they're personally cutting expenses in their own business. I love to tap into our more experienced consultants who have been around the block a time or two. They've made some mistakes. They've learned what's worked for them in their business. And they've learned from many of those little jigs and jogs, that experience that they bring to the table. So I wanted to do a special uh, shout out to these individuals. Many of the tips that I'm putting in front of you were presented by them, suggested by them. And what I think was really cool is in the discussion, as they were sharing their tips and suggestions, other experienced consultants were weighing in on them like, oh my gosh, that's genius, or I need to try that. So showing that you can stay a student even now with Pure Romance after many years. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna delve into a number of topics. Um, and if you can't stay with me the whole time, look, know that this is gonna be reposted on the Pure Romance Consultant YouTube channel. And if you missed any of the series, this eight part series, uh, that we're a number into. I'd love for you to go back and get caught up because we've hit a number of different topics on maximizing profitability. So many of us are very used to this phrase, it takes money to make money. And while I do believe that's true when it talks about making reasonable investments into your future, things like marketing, advertising, carrying inventory, having the right materials and equipment to use for your business, I also think that when you're launching a pure romance business, it shouldn't take a lot of money to make money. As a matter of fact, if you think about a lot of the materials that you need, the marketing, um, social posts, right? A number of the um, apps, apps that you would need, how to process orders, um, a personal website to promote your business. So much of that is provided to you as a peer romance consultant when you enroll with us. So um, I don't think it takes a ton of money to actually make money here at Peer Romance. There are some limited things that you do need to invest in. And I'm gonna delve into a number of those different things to give you some tips again from these top consultants of how they save money and how they protect their profits. One thing I wanna start out with is that any expenses, any investment that you make in your business, should pay for itself. One of the really important tips is before you purchase anything for your business, whether that's an app, whether it's uh, materials, whether it's advertising, um, anything that you buy for your business, we want you to pause and ask yourself first, how does this purchase bring growth to your business? right? So you're going to have to ask yourself that question and that's going to help keep you on track. Now, look, I know that there's women that don't love to be uh, on a budget and they don't love to cut expenses, but I would imagine that you came here to Pure Romance to actually make money. So if all of that money goes back into your business, you're not going to be a real happy camper, right? You're going to come to us and be like, I'm doing all this work. I'm putting all this effort into my business and I'm not making any money. And usually if I hear that from a consultant, one or two things are happening. One, she's not selling product. So she doesn't have any profit rolling in. Or two, she's overspending, right? To win that business or um, doing some extra things that she thinks is going to bring in more um, production, more sales, more leads, more parties and events, right? More, more, more. So what I want you to ask yourself before you buy anything, whether that a service, a tangible item, 
how does this bring growth to my business? And if you can't an easily answer that question, meaning does it save you time? Will it help you reach more customers? Will it help you increase the actual results of an order, meaning your order total goes up? Um, does it help you become more efficient, right? If you can't easily ask those questions, then just hold off on the purchase for a little while. Oftentimes that impulse buy will dissipate. Give it some thought, right? You want to consider any purchases really seriously before you just go spending money. I know we like to spend money and women are impulse shoppers. I get it. I am as well. But I always find if I just hold off for a day or two and I think about the purchase, oftentimes I don't make the purchase. The other thing we want to give you permission is to keep your business simple. The simpler, the better. That means it's going to take you less time to do what you do in the business. It doesn't need to be fancy. You don't have to go crazy with all the fluff. Oftentimes we'll look in, into others in the business, right? You'll go on a Facebook group. Maybe you're in a collaboration group. Maybe you're showing up to one of the work groups that happen throughout the entire globe where consultants will get together and they'll work on their business together. And you'll learn about some techniques or some items that that other consultant has invested in for her business. And you're like, ooh, if I do that, I'll get better results. Pull back. Sometimes more isn't always better. As a matter of fact, sometimes I think people overload their businesses with complexity and therefore it just becomes too heavy for them to complete, too much time to use all of those things. And therefore they just get bogged down. Keep it simple. Don't go crazy on the fluff and just know that more isn't always better. And the other thing I wanna just like level set here is, you are going to see consultants that um, do special t-shirts or special bags or pens that are personalized. So when they're leaving them out in the world, business may come back to them or koozies. So when people are out having a good time and having a beverage, they can remember your business. The fact of the matter is direct one-on-one -on -one marketing, right? Where you're having a conversation with somebody, where you're serving up what you do and you're making a direct offer is going to be the most effective for your business. Leaving pens all around town or leaving business cards all around town or leaving flyers all around town is a form of passive marketing, but it's not always gonna bring you the results that you want. So you don't need all of those personalized things to find the level of success. You reaching out to people directly, having conversations directly, showing up on social and making a connection there, having that interaction is going to be your best investment in your business, hands down. All right, next up, I want to talk to you about the Taco Bell factor. And let me tell you, folks, this is a real thing. I've coached many consultants over the years. And when somebody comes to me and they're like, I'm just not making money with this business, I always first look at, I already gave you the hint on this. Hopefully you can pop a comment in the chat for me and tell me what it was. Yeah, is she selling product on a regular basis? Is she getting herself in front of people enough? Because I'm a firm believer that if you, again, have that one-on-one -on -one conversation, you will find a way to turn that conversation into a helper for your business, whether that person becomes a customer she books a party or an event with you. She becomes a hostess. Or maybe she's looking for a way to make money as well. So she might actually join Pure Romance alongside of you and do the business together. If a consultant says to me, I'm not making any money, and she is selling product on a regular basis, the next place I look is where is that money going? And that brings us to Taco Bell. I am a firm believer that I know you guys are probably blowing it up in the chat right now saying, I love Taco Bell. Okay. I'm not dumping on Taco Bell here. Um, but here's what I tend to find. You have a consultant that goes and does a party and she collects from cash from those orders. And that's going to be one of my tips. Ask for cash, right? It, it helps you actually um, remove some expenses. More about that in a moment. Um, but you collect cash from the party. And before you know it, it can be gone in a flash. So in reality, it isn't that you didn't make money at the party. It's the fact that 
money usually gets spent oftentimes in some cases faster than we can make it. So it feels like we're not making enough money. So let me walk you through an example. This was an actual legit like example that I just kind of abbreviated. I won't say her name, but I was in a coaching situation with this consultant. She was like, I'm not making money. I don't know where it's going. And so we started to break it down. She went out and she did a party that was roughly $700. And of all those orders, she collected $260 in cash. The rest of all of the charges rolled through her credit card processor. On her way home, it was late night. And what is the one place in most areas that are is open late night? You guessed it, Taco Bell. So she swung through Taco Bell. It was a great party. She really splurged. I know some of you like $10, right? Well, she got a couple snacks. She got a big drink because she had to drive home, right? And she wanted to do it, not hungry. So roughly $10 went to Taco Bell, woke up the next morning, her son comes in and says, hey, remember mom, I got to pay for that activity that I have at school and they're asking for a payment. She pulls $100 out of her purse and boom, gives it to her son. Then her daughter comes through and says, mom, I need money for lunch. She didn't have any smaller bills. So boom, daughter took $20 and said, I'll bring you back the change later. You know what happens there, right? Then she goes out on her daily routine, needs gas in the car. So she swings by, puts gas in, $50 out of her purse, gone like that. And then she had to do that trip to Target. And I don't know about you, but that like Target kryptonite happens. And no matter what you're going in for, you will spend at least $100 in Target, no matter what you're going for. As we went through this routine, that $260 that she had in cash went in a flash. She wasn't even through the whole next day before that cash was gone. So she still had that feeling of like, I'm not making money. The fact of the matter, she was making money. And she, if she wasn't careful, she wasn't even tracking where it was going and poof, it was gone almost overnight. It's a common story. So how do you overcome that? Well, our suggestion that many consultants follow is to have a separate account for your business transactions. There's a number of banks out there that will provide a free checking with a savings account attached to it where you can run all of the checks for your business, right? All of the payments for your business. And when you get paid by Pure Romance through a commission or a monthly bonus, you can transfer that money out to your business account. Now, what happens when you collect cash? Keep a cash bag, right? And keep that money separate and don't just put it back in your wallet, in your purse. It just gets mixed and mingled and it goes really fast and then you're not even tracking it. So I always suggest that consultants separate that money, keep it in a cash bag and don't pull it out until they recap their party the next day. Um, one really, really important mistake that some consultants have fallen victim to is going through all of that money that they've collected and they spend it before they place their order to fulfill the customer orders that they needed. And then guess what happens? They're playing catch up, right? They're having to figure out where the money's going to come to cover the money they've already spent in profit, to place that order on the online office, to get the products that they owe to customers. And so that can be a dangerous game because you can get behind and then you can really have some upset customers. Your business is going to be a lot of word of mouth. So what other people tell other people about you. And if they were like, I went to a party, but it took forever for me to get my order. I wasn't even sure if I was ever going to get it. That is fatal to a small business, right? Because that really makes people nervous. So you want to make sure you're isolating those funds. Keep track of them. When I say recap your party the next day, do a quick recap of every single party. There's a party recap form on the training website that you certainly can use. Um, but some consultants just have a notebook and they put down the basics of the party. What were the retail sales? How many people did they have attend? How many people purchased? How many party bookings did they get? How many consultant leads did they get, right? Just the basics. What was collected through credit card, 
and what was collected through cash, just to have that recap of how did things go? Oh, and the other one, what did you give the hostess in terms of incentives and hostess gifts and really any other notes about the party? I think it's a really important recap to have one. It helps you actually see the profit that you're making in front of you because you get retail sales and how much you collected against those sales. So you see the profit, it becomes more real. Um, and it's not just money that's flowing through your account or cash that's leaving your hands really quickly. And then many consultants, you'll see a number of different variations. Today, I'm gonna to give you the simplest, is having an envelope savings technique to fuel their goals. So the next day when they recap their parties, there's some diehard consultants that are hyped up after they do an event. So they'll come home that night and they will do this as kind of their wind down process. But if you want to get your Z's because you want to stay healthy, right? Um, you can do this the next day. Take your profit and figure out how much is going to go to each one of the things that you're saving for, right? And we'll find that consultants will do an envelope for something that they're saving for that might be on their dream board. They might be saying, I need this much for my monthly expenses, right? They're breaking down that money physically and physically putting it in, in an envelope. Now, when I said there's some fun things that you see people do out there, you'll see people that are will toss some cash in a wine bottle because it's very difficult to get out. You have to actually break the bottle to get that money out. It keeps them from just dipping into their funds and, and just having it go away really quickly. And that way, over time, as you're making more and more with your business, you're actually seeing those goals ticked off, right? You're getting those dream board items um, actually accomplish. You're going to feel better about your business. You'll have more enthusiasm. You'll be living the life that you want to create and design. Um, and this is a really important step. So you're like, oh, I thought we were like cutting expenses here. And one of the things you got to do before you can even talk about spending money on your business is see the money you're making with the business. So I hope that was really helpful. Now, I did one session that was completely dedicated to buying smart. So I'm just gonna take you through a quick recap because these themes came up from the consultants that weighed in on this class a tremendous amount. So things like taking advantage of online office sales when you're investing in inventory, buying six packs, right? Buying bulk on the online office so you get that benefit of those extra discounts. If you want to control your inventory and have more of a selection on fragrance, right? Or maybe flavor in products when, if it comes in a six pack or even breaking up six packs that might come in toys. Oftentimes they'll partner with another consultant and you'll take three of a particular item and then swap a consultant out for other products, right? So that you're, you're kind of splitting the, um, you're breaking up the investment and having a little bit more selection in your inventory. Um, the other thing we talked about is grouping orders together to try to eliminate placing online or office orders on a very, very frequent basis. Most consultants try to order about two, three times a month on online office orders that they're um, processing. And then of course, we always like to say, especially with our customers, that women tend to be impulse buyers. But here's what happens. Women are buying inventory and sometimes they can be an impulse buyer with their business and they buy additional things that they don't necessarily need in their inventory. So that's where we came back to give you some tips on how to track that inventory and make sure you're buying smart. So I, I couldn't not do this recap. So let's get into some uh, new information for you. I'm not that, but these are really important. Your shipping and handling should help offset your shipping and handling expenses. So top, top consultants you will find will rarely, if ever, discount shipping and handling for customers. On occasion, and I covered this in a previous class as well, I hope you check it out on using specials and incentives, you will hear some consultants that will give free shipping and handling for the hostess the night of her party. But for the customers, they always charge shipping. Here's the fact of the matter. If you are having inventory on hand, you have just prepaid the shipping for her. So when you collect shipping from each one of those customers, it can help 
offset any of that shipping that you are paying to get product to you. I hear from consultants all the time, like, oh, shipping's expensive. But what they tend to not factor in is the fact that they're collecting on average $8 per customer, right? To cover shipping and handling for the actual customer order. So let's say you had four parties in a month you had 28 buying customers in those parties and you charge them each shipping, that would be $224 in shipping that you have collected. Now it's rare, meaning it's a consultant that's super on top of her game and she's buying incredibly smart. But when she maintains her inventory at a really healthy level for her business, in some occasions, because she's able to deliver so much product in the moment, she actually can make money on the shipping that she is collecting. You gotta be on top of your game in order to make that happen. Um, but just keep in mind, you have shipping flowing into you that you're collecting from customers and then shipping that you're paying to have product on hand and they should offset each other. And that's why we never wanna see it discounted. Now let's talk about some ways that you can save on business supplies. I'm gonna hit a number of different topics. I'm gonna to stay on shipping, but this is going to be your cost of shipping product to customers. So the first one is using something like Pirate Ship or ship.com. These are two services, Pure Romance is not connected to them. I'm not doing an endorsement on them. I'm going after, after um, customer or consultants telling us what works well for them. Pirate Ship I see is very, very prevalent within our sales force. Ship.com also gets mentioned a fair amount. And there are two services that will help you purchase shipping fees through them and you can often get discounted fees. Um, now, you will do this from your home, so you will need a scale in order to weigh packages, right? Because much of the shipping um, costs are factored in on the weight of the package. Now, the cool thing with a number of these is you can actually skirt some of the expenses. I'm aware that consultants are actually using a really inexpensive food scale that she probably purchased on her trip to Target. Um, in order to, to link the weight to her pirate ship account. Um, when it comes to how much packages weigh, oftentimes you will hear people say, well, I just get all of my packing supplies from the post office because they give you boxes for free. What you do need to consider though is often your shipping is based on the weight of packages. So if you're using those larger boxes, the box in itself adds weight and therefore can increase your shipping and handling costs. So keep that into consideration when you're picking the materials in which you're putting products. Um, oftentimes you will find most consultants will use um, <clears throat> the lighter weight boxes, the envelopes that are provided that are flat rate. They have um, letter size envelopes and then legal size for larger items. Um, or bubble mailers, which tend to be incredibly light, instead of always shipping things in a heavier box. Now, I'm going to give you a contrary um, view in a moment, but it will all make sense. On the other hand, we do find that some consultants will use the boxes that come inside her shipments from Pure Romance to ship certain products out to customers. Now, you might be saying, well, you just said, be careful in using boxes, but here's how they look at this. They didn't pay anything additional for those shipping supplies. So think about a six pack that um, comes to you from Pure Romance. You get a box inside the larger box. And when those boxes are in good condition, one, they'll organize their inventory in them, but two, many consultants will use those packing materials to reuse them for customers. It can offset the increase in shipping a box and shipping and handling. So just a couple things to, um, to always look at is keeping those expenses on those shipping materials really low and considering what you're shipping things in. Now, when it comes to actually shipping supplies, we've got a few tips for you here. Um, there's a number of consultants that buy shipping supplies in bulk, and oftentimes they'll um, collaborate with another consultant and if they're able to buy in bulk and save even more money, 
they'll split the costs and split the materials in those shipments, right? So they can get a huge discount, but split the amount of money that they've now outlaid for that. Um, you pack in ship.com. Um, take a look at the screen because it's um, PAC, P-A-K, um, and just an N is a place where I know a number of people will get their actual shipping supplies. There's a whole host of companies out there that you can find online. Um, so be sure to check them out, do a little price comparison, right? But usually those bubble mailers from upackandship.com tend to be incredibly reasonable. When you're not shipping by weight, do check the prices of those, again, the flat rate envelopes and the flat rate legal envelopes. They can sometimes save you money, um, sometimes upwards to a dollar per shipment. So you can do a little price comparison. And what you will tend to know over time, we know this at our corporate office, hands down, that packages that weigh a pound or less are better shipped maybe through the post office where packages that are a little bit heavier might be best to be shipped through something like pirate ships. So um, you can do those price comparisons. And as you become more experienced, um, you can certainly figure out what's the best way to pack this and what's the best way to ship this. That's going to bo be both super economical for you and get to the customer in really good shape. Now, many of our consultants are buying packing tape um, which can get expensive if you're buying it from the office supply stores, or even if you go into like the UPS store, it's like a, a mortgage payment for a roll of tape. So shop the dollar store for just the cheap packing tape. Again, look at things like you pack and ship. Often we'll have deals on shipping tape. When you're using these services, whether it's ship.com or pirate ship, know that you can schedule UPS to come to your house and pick up packages. So think about the gas and the time that you can save when you're shipping items on a very regular basis. Now there's some consultants that always wanna to go to the post office and always wanna go into um, their shipping stores because they're creating a relationship with the people behind the counter and that can actually bring them business as well. We hear that people that go to the post office all the time and know the people that work behind the counter so much that oftentimes those individuals referring customers to them. So it can happen. But if you are one of those always on the go type of people where your time is incredibly limited, you've got a lot on your plate, you may appreciate UPS coming and just picking up all that stuff and taking it away for you. Um, the other thing you can do as well, and, and this happens depending on the particular area that you are doing business, Many consultants, if a customer lives pretty close to them, will actually hand deliver that delivery to the customer directly, right? It's a little bit more personalized. Now, where you did the party and where the customer is in relationship to you obviously has to factor in to for you to decide whether that makes sense. But if she's just a couple streets over or just on the other side of town, it may make sense for you. Um, the other thing, and boy, this came back from a number of different consultants, keep the items that you're putting in packages super, super simple. So what some people said to us is they ship like Amazon. And what they meant by that is brown box, basic filler to keep the items safe in the packaging, a business card, and an inexpensive thank you note that they have likely got at the dollar store and they just personalized it. Super, super simple. You don't need to put like all the confetti. As a matter of fact, as a customer, I can't stand when I get things at home with confetti because it gets everywhere, right? Um, they, you don't have to put all the streamers and all of the stickers and all of the inserts, right? Just keep it super simple. Remember, you need to ask yourself, what business is gonna come back to you as a result of doing that? So simple is often better. Now let's talk about office supplies because I don't know what it is about women. And I, I will admit to you, I'm, I'm going to put myself in this category. I like all of the different colors of Sharpies that I can buy. I don't know why I need a Sharpie in 50 different colors. I don't even use half of them, but I have them. I also know that many love to organize all of their inventory in a beautiful setting. 
all while that creates a nice backdrop for you for social, you need your inventory to just be easy to get to and easy to work with and easy to transport and easy to send. So like I said earlier, oftentimes I'll find people that are just using the smaller boxes that come in shipment to organize inventory. I don't think you need to go out and buy fancy um, fat max cases, those toolboxes to carry your inventory around. As a matter of fact, they're super heavy and really hard to get in and out of your car. Um, oftentimes you'll find people that will grab an old suitcase and they'll put inventory in there. Um, a really super inexpensive bin that you got on sale can work, right? You don't have to go crazy buying all of the office supplies and all of the organizational tools and all of the pretty folders and all of the pretty notebooks and all of the pretty things in order to make money. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm going to say your profit is likely just going to go out the door. And so all of that is going into the pretty, but you're not necessarily fueling what you want to fuel here with your business, right? Building, building the life you want to live. And here's the deal. Here's a little tip for you. The busier the consultant is, this is always true confessions when I'm working with one of our top producing consultants. The busier the consultant is, the messier her workspace tends to be. And the least organized she probably looks as a business person. You know, I have taught people all the time, like, don't like, don't look at my office space. I know where my inventory is, but nobody else would, right? So um, look, they want to look like they're a together business person and they worry about how their supplies look when they pass them to a customer. But the behind the scenes work tends to be a little chaotic because guess what? They're busy, so they don't have time to create all the colored folders and all of the color coordinated, all of the things. Like they're on the go, they're busy, they're selling product. They know what helps them get paid. So true confessions from a lot of top consultants. I know there's a lot of top consultants that are like, you just described me, I'm a hot mess and I hate to explain that to anybody. It happens. Okay, next up. When you are ordering reasonable office supplies, we do have a relationship with ODP Business Solutions. That's an Office Depot card um, that provides you some discounts on some items that you purchase directly from them. To sign up for the program, you can just go on to our online office, look to business partners, and this was the URL that I came up with when I clicked on it. It will just take you to a quick website. If you're logged in with us, it's nice. It auto-populates for you, but you can just go on and register your card. And it literally gives you a card that you can use online or use in person to get some discounts on some office supplies. So that always helps. Now, this one might seem a little counter um, and uh, let me walk through it. I'll explain the whys behind, but we did have some consultants come to us that are very, 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 very focused on printing costs because guess what? That stuff can add up really quick. So we had a couple of consultants that said they actually, because of the volume of business that they were doing and the materials that they were using, they actually invested in a laser printer. That tends to be a little bit more expensive of a purchase up front than something like an inkjet printer. But we all know those ink cartridges are crazy expensive and it seems like you go through them faster than water. So um, we had a Few people suggest, somebody even suggested the, the brand in the series that she went with, a Brother Genuine um, series. It was a $400 purchase for her. But what she said was she's only purchased ink and replaced it one time in two years. And the cartridge for laser printers tend to be more reasonable than those expensive inkjet printer cartridges. So, um, Think about if you're printing a lot of wish lists or other materials to support your business, um, that might be an investment that makes sense for you long-term. You don't have to do it up front, but um, if you're like, oh, I'm spending a lot in printing, you might want to take a look at there. Now, the other thing um, I want to put in front of you is making sure you're using what is supplied. When you look at very experienced consultants' businesses, 
they will reach for some of the more complex tools, meaning um, they might be standing up their own website that they keep behind the scenes to help support a flash sale. They might be using some of the more expensive um, design programs or communication programs that they've invested in. Um, things like um, you'll hear project broadcast mentioned as it relates to sending text messages and marketing messages. Um, when you start to add up a number of those materials from Canva to project broadcast to your shipping and blah, 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 if you layer in too many of those, again, profit can be out the door. So that's a really high level, very productive business focus most of the time. So for you in your business, make sure you're spending based on where you're at in business right now. Use things like your personal website. Now, there's always going to be people that say, well, if I supply product directly to a customer, I'm going to make more money with my buying discount than I will with a commission that I get off of personal website orders. But there's some consultants that look at it this way. If that order goes right to your personal website, you get credit for the retail, Pure Romance packs and ships that order directly to the customer. You never have to touch it. That difference in buying discount can often pay for itself, right? It can actually make sense for you to just let those roll through your personal website. So that's a consideration for your business. The other thing that has so many robust features in it is Pure Shop. So that's your point of sale app that you can use to process orders on. You can also use it to track your inventory and keep track of that, keep track of what items you need to supply to a customer if you didn't have them in stock on hand. And you can also send messages through it too. So um, you can create invoices for people. You can create shopping carts for people. So there's so much that it does. Why go to another app? Why not use something that was designed specifically for pure romance consultants to do their business? The other thing we'd love to see people tap into is the marketing assets that are already created for you. So pure romance throughout each month creates little um, assets that you can share on social, you can text directly to a customer. All of that work is done for you. Why sit in front of Canva and try to become a Canva expert when we've got a team behind the scenes that's done it for you, right? And then the next thing that I want you to tap into is blogs. So if you go to pureromance.com, you will see that we do a regular feed of blogs. That is great information that relates back to our product line, sexual health tips, relationship tips, intimacy tips. So we've done a lot of the work in creating that for you. And that's great information to fuel your customer's interest in doing business with you even more. So use what's supplied. Okay, now the next one, is really super important to residual business, meaning customers coming back and placing replenishment orders with you, those consumable products, anything that's liquid, right? Any of the bath and body items, lubricants, right? Um, they should come back to you, but oftentimes they won't remember who you were. I know, can you imagine? You weren't so memorable that six months from now, she's like, who was that sex toy lady who came and did that party? So that's why labeling products is really super important. But we've got consultants that have figured out um, some really cost-effective ways to do it. Now, some consultants will go out there and they'll shop the sales on waterproof labels, right? Now, if you shop some of those, they can be a little bit on the higher side. And gosh, if, if you end up moving and now you've got a bunch of labels that no longer have the right contact information for you, if you choose to put location information on there or even a website or a phone number, right? Um, so we've got a number of consultants that use a Dymo printer, right? It's one of those label printers, but you can get wider um, paper, if you will, label um, maker, the paper that you can put in that you can actually use it to print your product labels on. So um, again, you pack and ship provides a whole host of different labels that you can purchase for this. And the label printer itself, you can get really super fancy ones and you can get really less expensive ones out there. So do some shopping on it. Um, 
but the printer itself can be anywhere. I found them for around $25, $30 for the really like inexpensive ones. And you can find them upwards to $100 if you're doing higher volume. So check that out to label your products in a really inexpensive way. And, um, and then start looking at an experienced consultant's materials because you will probably find that she's labeled practically everything in her life using these label printers. I always watch people's like, inventory bins and what have you. And if they're using a Dymo printer, everything is labeled in their life. It's inexpensive. So give that a try. Um, the next category I want to go into is saving on party or event expenses. And there's a number of ways that you can do that. Of course, one of the most popular is buying smart for any of those materials that you can't get here at Pure Romance by visiting places like the Dollar Tree stores or uh, Five and Below, whatever you have in your area. Um, it really is going to be your friend when you're looking for maybe, um, cute bags to put some gifts or some surprises in. I'll find people will buy those gold envelopes that they might put some, uh, opportunity information in to spark some leads on people becoming a consultant. Uh, oftentimes at those stores, you can find the really inexpensive organza bags. So if you're doing a gift, even when you put a coupon with your business card in a little organza bag that probably costs you pennies, it looks so much better, right? Yes, people will use tissue paper a lot, any of the ribbon, the smaller gift boxes for any of the games that you might be doing as well. So be sure to shop the Dollar Tree store and shop the Dollar Tree store looking ahead of what you're gonna need for your business in the future. And what I mean by that is, shop Valentine's Day items after Valentine's Day has happened, right? Shop Christmas or holiday items after the holiday has actually taken place because you know you're gonna get crazy discounted items. You can tuck them away and you're good to go for next year. Um, the other thing you can do too is check pricing on Amazon as well. Just be careful with Amazon because you know, even if you have an Amazon Prime account, sometimes shipping can pop in there and sometimes it's not always the least expensive. So taking the trip to the actual discount store can actually be less expensive for you. And then this last one, um, and I really love this, this tip because it related to party materials. Use a QR code to put your information on party materials because you can go in and change all of that information associated with QR code very easily. And Canva has a free QR code creator. If you do a search for free QR codes, um, you will literally find a whole host of them, a bunch of sites that will let you create a custom QR code that takes the person into wherever you want that information to reside. It can be your personal website, right? That way your materials will never, ever have to be reprinted again with new contact information. It's going to be evergreen. Now, the other couple of tips on party supplies is you will see a number of consultants that instead of giving away so many um, products as a gift, they'll give away 10% coupons because they're cheap and easy to print and it encourages additional orders. This is especially true if it's a prize that for some reason you had to send to somebody, right? So think about flash sale prizes. When somebody's doing a flash sale, instead of shipping additional product out to her, which can be expensive, putting a coupon in is super low weight, super low cost to you. And also what sometimes happens is even when you're giving like um, free product as a free gift that they must redeem with their next order, some people don't always redeem that. So it can play out in your favor as well. So um, the other thing I want you to think about is when you do award a free gift, you pick the item. That way you can shop the Pure Romance sales pages on the online office and you can buy the items cheap, 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 and therefore get those additional discounts. So you're giving a really nice gift, but you didn't have to pay a lot for it. Now you will see consultants using lap boards. There's some people that have removed lap boards completely because they don't wanna carry additional things to parties or events. Um, but you will still see people organize those party materials that you want them to tune into in lap boards. But the lap boards are nothing more than going to the dollar store, 
buying really inexpensive binders and just cutting with a razor blade along the side to just separate the one folder from the rest of the binder so you actually have a lap board. Super inexpensive, really, really on the cheap, um, gives you a place to organize all your materials. Now, when you are buying business cards, maybe those small reward cards that you want to give to people, Vistaprint is a business partner that we work with as well, and they're often running sales. So make sure that you're shopping their sales. So when you do invest in these items, you're again doing it on the cheap. All right, lamination. I know I'm telling you to buy a laminator and you don't have to. You certainly can walk into some of the stores and they'll do lamination for you, but we will tend that people will look for a laminator on the cheap because they laminate anything that will sit still. Meaning think about any of the party menus that you use on a very regular basis at your parties. Anything that you're using maybe as a game at your party, like some people use bingo or things like that. They'll laminate them and use a dry erase marker to put any notes on there. And they can use them over and over and over again and cut down on any of those printing supplies. There's also some people that have found very inexpensive um, menus that you might get at like a fancy restaurant, meaning you open them up and they have that clear sheet of paper. So you can put a sheet of paper like a menu behind it. And that's what they're using to provide party information because they can use those over and over and over again. Now, this one was funny. I didn't think it was going to be one of those that I had like several consultants weigh in on it. And some were like, oof, mind blown. And then other people were like, oh my gosh, I do this all the time and I save a whole bunch of money. So when you're printing, um, say, a thank you card or maybe a 10% coupon card that you want to put in orders or present to people at parties, think about those like nice, like glossy cards that we all love to have. They can get kind of expensive, especially if you go into like a print shop and you order from there. So there's a number of consultants that will pop by their one hour photo places and they actually will use them to print those inserts, those postcard inserts into um, their orders, which is genius. Because if you think about many of those one hour photo places, they tend to not be expensive. And two, they're always running specials. A couple of consultants were like, I do it online all the time. I don't even have to go to the store. And they're always running a 50% off sale for online orders. So um, I love that tip. I wouldn't even have thought of doing it either. Um, but I think it's another um, like super inexpensive way. And then the last one on party supplies might do a little jig and jog here, but I think it's an important one. Every time you have a credit card charge that runs through your account, I don't care what kind of small business you are, whether it's pure romance or a boutique you walk in or your pure romance business, there is a small percentage associated with processing that card. Um, so many consultants have become in the habit of in their party open, they will say straight up, here are the forms of payment that I accept. But as a small business owner, I really love when people pay in cash. And you just do the head nod. And oftentimes people are happy to give you cash if they have it with you, that with them. Um, and cash rolling through your business helps you reduce some of those expenses on those credit card fees. All right. Speaking of credit cards, this is one you really got to lean into because it can be really impactful for your business. All of your business expenses should run through a credit card that provides you rewards for using that credit card. Now, which card you pick for you is really going to depend on how you want to live and the things that you're going to benefit from most. And what I mean by that is um, there's a high number of consultants that I hear will use uh, a credit card that gives miles to their favorite airline. That allows them to buy airline tickets super cheap because they've accumulated all of these miles towards them. Oftentimes, if they go to a training or if they're going on vacation, all of the miles they're accumulated can give them actual free travel. 
So that's a great credit card for somebody to use that's a traveler, right? Now, which card is best for you? That's really gonna depend on what is the primary airline that you use when you fly out of your airport. We all know certain airlines have certain hubs. Um, so Southwest might be more popular in one area, Delta more popular in another area, American airline more popular. So seek out the one that you believe you're gonna get the most usage out of. And when I say everything goes on that credit card, I'm in a firm, I'm, use an American Express on a very, very regular basis. That is my card of choice. Delta is my airline of choice. And yes, I go for miles. Um, so I use my American Express for everything, but I also pay it off every single month so that I'm not running up credit card interest fees, right? But it puts all of my expenses in one place. I've got a catalog of everything that I've um, actually done for the business. And it's a super easy in accounting on the other side as well. And I get miles. So it means when I go see my family in Boston, I'm flying from Cincinnati. I don't have to pay for that. Miles are paying for those flights. So this is one where a lot of new consultants don't think about in the beginning. And then as they get more and more productive in the business, all of a sudden they're like, if I had been doing this from day one, think about how it would have benefited me. Now, if miles are not your thing because travel isn't your thing, maybe you're not leaving your area that frequently, you can look to those credit cards that may give you cash back. And oftentimes that gives you yet another profit center because think about all if you're placing online office orders on a regular basis, right? Two to three orders a month, uh, that can add up in some nice cash back. So it's another little rebate program for you. You can look to websites like Nerd Wallet. That will give you a, a listing of the more popular reward cards and what the rewards are. So you can pick one that works best for you and just do a, a little bit of quick math. Sometimes we get caught up in the, I want a no fee card, um, but you know these companies balance one way or the other. So sometimes a, a minimal fee on that card will give you greater rewards over time. So just do a little quick math and pick the one that's best for you. Just make sure that you're using that card for everything to get the full benefit of it for your business. And then make sure you're not running up credit card debt. You're paying those expenses off on a regular basis. All right. So let's talk one other thing on business expenses. Keep track of your business expenses and work with a tax preparer because there's a number of expenses so associated with your business that will help you out when you do your income taxes each year. As a small business owner, you can get the benefit of claiming a number of those business expenses and therefore offsetting the amount of income tax that you'll need to pay on your business. Now, seek out a tax preparer does not have to be expensive, right? I like to go to the mom and pop people in my area and find somebody who's reputable that will do your taxes for you on the cheap. And you can find many, I'm sure, in your area. If you're like, oh, that overwhelms me and I know I'm not gonna pay my taxes on time. And so I'd rather just go to something really super easy and known. Pure Romance has an individual that we've worked with for years. As a matter of fact, Patty Brisbane back in the day started with his individual as her tax preparer. Um, and now he's become like family and he works with a number of pure romance consultants to um, actually uh, recap and submit their income tax each year. It's a program that's called Pure Income Tax. And what you'll find is they've created a very quick um, program that helps you organize all the information that you need so that they can help you get the most benefit out of claiming your business expenses and also getting your taxes um, paid on time. So you're in good standing with the government and your business. Um, I want you to think about keeping track of things like your shipping costs, postage costs, any discounts you're giving out, any free product you awarded as gifts, um, anything that you might have incurred a tax difference on, meaning you prepaid tax when you placed that order through the online office, but you gave the product for free, um, keep track of those things, any entertaining you did for your business to promote your business, any trainings that you went to, 
equipment that you purchase. If you're already like buying your little label maker machine before this class was even over, keep track of that expense. Now, how do you keep track of expenses? Because most people, like I said, the very productive people are like, can't stand doing paperwork and my office is a mess. So how do you keep track of it easily? I know for me back in the day, I would put an envelope in my purse. And when I was out doing errands or I had used my card or what have you, I just took that receipt. And if it was associated with my business, I just immediately put it in the envelope. It's a habit that you will just get used to. Take the envelope out once a month, write September on it if it's for the month of September and put a new envelope in there. Keep those envelopes in your office. And at the end of the year, you've got all of those little receipts that you've collected for your business that may have been things you paid cash for, they didn't roll through on your credit card, right? All of those little things can be right there and man, they can add up. Um, so that Dollar Tree trip, right? Like just keep all those receipts really easily in one place. And then it's super easy for a tax preparer to recap all that stuff and give you credit for it. Um, also that use of that credit card is another great way because look, the governments have said, that oftentimes that credit card listing can act as the receipt for those purchases as well. So um, I'm not a tax expert, so I'm not giving tax advice here. And that's why we say work with one who is, um, but these are just some basics to give you an idea of like, look, from the get go, even if you're buying that curly ribbon to put around a 10% coupon that's in a little organza bag, um, all of those things that can really add up. So um, that's a really super simple way. Some people have fancy spreadsheets and they, they break down all of their expenses. Um, but if you think about the basics, just cataloging mileage, keeping receipts, keeping track of all of that it can add up over time. And when I mentioned the trainings, there is an investment to go to trainings, but again, those business expenses can help offset and then if you think about being able to improve the results of your business, that profit can pay for it as well as, um, as well, but be smart when you're going to trainings. Now, I already told you there's some consultants that are earning their airline tickets for free with miles, but there's a number of other consultants that will choose to drive to events. They carpool with other consultants. So they're splitting the cost of gas. They're sharing the overnight room expenses by bunking up with multiple people in their rooms and splitting the cost there as well. Um, there's consultants that go so far as they say, I am not gonna be one of those Taco Bell people where my profit just goes out the door. They pack snacks when they go to these events or they pack snacks when they go to parties because they wanna make sure that being out and about doesn't just run up their expenses, right? You don't want this to be expensive for you. And then the last thing I wanna to touch on is time equaling money for you. The time that you spend on your business is valuable. And so I want you to be really mindful of the fact that you have an hourly earn rate with your business. Even though you're an independent business owner, you're an independent contractor, you get to decide what you're working on, how long you work on it, and how much time you spend on your business. When you do spend time on your business, if you take the profit that you're rolling in and divide that by the number of hours that you're working on your business, you have an hourly fee for your business. So I want you to protect that by making sure that you get done what you wanna get done for your business as quickly and efficiently as you can so you can get out of your business and go live your life. Be really super careful of things like the good old social media time warp that happens, right? Especially with things like Reels, and TikTok, right? And Instagram feeds. If you're going on there to see how other people are promoting their business, look for content suggestions for yourself, you're going on to drive interaction through posting on other people's posts and commenting, right? Oftentimes that can suck hours of your day and when you pick your head up, you're like, where did that hour and a half go? Because you were just surfing all the social platforms and you really didn't get paid for that time. So you have to be careful. 
set a timer for yourself. I have one of these in my office on a regular basis, right? And I literally can just flip it either way. It was super, super cheap. And it keeps me on track because if I'm like, I need to get through my email to make sure I respond to customer requests, right? For your business, any of those questions that people might have, set a timer. You should be able to get through all of your email in less than 10 minutes. But isn't it funny if we don't keep ourselves on track, we'll spend a couple hours doing it. The other thing that as a conserver of time and making sure you're being efficient, oftentimes you'll have consultants that will theme out their days when they're working on their business because they've set aside time to work on their business. But once they get into their at-home office space, they might find themselves just organizing paperwork or responding to emails and they're not getting to all the things like following up on leads, doing that outreach to get additional orders through outside orders. So you might set a theme for your day where like Monday is all of your recap work from the parties you held over the weekend. You're making sure you're ordering any products you need to order, shipping any products that you had at home you didn't necessarily have with you. Tuesday might be the day that you do all of your follow-up work for leads, um, reaching out to get residual orders for replenishment orders, right? Your days can look however in whatever order you want to have them in, but just having a theme to your day. So when you hit your at-home workspace, you know exactly what day it is and what you need to get done in that day. It really allows you to get in, get done for your business, what you want to get done, and then go live your life. And then the other thing that we find that consultants ask themselves all the time is, am I focusing on money producing activities? That's such a really popular phrase within our sales force because we know how it is, especially when you're working your business at home. You're not clocking in, not clocking out. That time can go by really fast. And sometimes you can be working on things like creating a pretty new wish list for your party when your wish list didn't really have to be changed, doesn't pay you any additional money. It might make you feel good. It might make you happy. And if that's the case and you're fine with the time that you're putting in, no problem. But if you come to us and you're like, I'm not making any money in this business because I'm spending so much time, the first place you got to look at is, are you doing things that actually create money? Following up with customers asking for additional orders, making suggestions on upselling and cross-selling, right? All of those things can fuel your results in a really positive way. And that is time and therefore money really well spent. Okay, my friends, I've given you so many different things on how you can cut expenses to protect the profits in your business. Next week, we're going to talk about some strategic selling practices, some techniques that you can use to boost your results even more. I'm going to pull in some of the best of the best to help me with this class so you get perspectives directly from people that are out there doing it. Um, I think it's going to be a great class. We're going to give you a lot of tips. We've already given you a lot of tips in these other classes that we've already done. So if you have not yet gone through the advantages of the pay plan, how to buy smart and build inventory, and how to leverage incentives and bonuses, again, you can find them on the Consultant YouTube channel. I really appreciate you spending time today. I love your dedication to becoming successful with Pure Romance, and we'll see you next time where we're talking selling tips that will give you even more production. Have a great one.